Welcome to this special edition of Extreme Reloading. I'm just about ready to head out to the range and what we're going to be doing today is shooting another 30 shot group. But this time I'm going to be using these Nosler Custom Competition 168 grain 308 bullets hand loaded very particularly if you missed our previous 30 shot group where we fired that with the Sierra tipped Match King and it did pretty darn well um, let me set up what we're going to be doing today I'm going to be shooting a 30 shot group I'm going to be shooting it from 100 yards from the prone position I'm going to try to have everything running continuously so we don't miss out on any of the action last time it took me over an hour about an hour and a half to shoot that 30 shot group and what I'm doing and the reason why I took an hour and a half uh, that included, of course, all the setup and stuff. But anyway, I'm going to start with a five-shot group at a normal 8.5-inch uh, by 11-inch target set at 100 yards. Then I'm going to stop shooting. I'm going to go up to that target. I'm going to measure the extreme spread of that particular five-shot group. And then right over the top of that, that, that target, I'm going to place a fresh target. I'm not taking the old target down because that original target, that first target I put up, will catch all 30 shots. And they'll give me the true extreme spread of that 30 shot group. The second target that I put up there is going to, again, give me the next five shot group. And once that five shot group is finished, I'm going to go back up to that target, repeat that process measure the extreme spread, put another brand new target up there, and continue that process. I will end up shooting six five-shot groups, and then ultimately I'll be able to do a lot of analysis on all that data that I'll be collecting, just like I did in the previous video. So, stick around. We're going to head out to the range. See you out there. Well, it's a nice day out here at the range, pretty pleasant temperatures, and a just a little bit more wind than I would call ideal, about 10 mile per hour wind, which normally, I, I'm not too concerned about wind with a 308 unless I get much above 15 miles an hour and I'll have that wind in a um, crosswind situation. In this case, the wind is blowing from my 6 downrange to the 12 o'clock, position so if anything it'll push my rounds just a little bit high. Now there's the completion of string number one. We had an edge to edge extreme spread of 2.06 inches. When I actually calculate the true extreme spread that is subtracting 0 0.308 from that value, the edge to edge value, we have a 1.75 inch extreme spread which equates to a 1.68 MOA. Not the very best first string, so I'm a little bit concerned about this 30 shot group. Accuracy though wasn't bad at all. 48 points, lost two outside the 10, but uh, none in the X Now string number two is in the books. That gives me an MOA of 0 0.96. Now that's more like it sub MOA, but just barely. 50 points on the bullseye target with two in the X. Now this load that I'm shooting with the Nosler Custom Competition, I'm using Lapua Brass and RL15 powder. I got 42.9 grains of RL15. And I'm using CCI BR2 large rifle primers, that is bench rest primers. Neck tension on these rounds is about three thousandths of an inch. And my cartridge base to ogive for all of these rounds is set very precisely to 2.212 inch. And that has proven to be 
the best or the optimum for this particular bullet. I should note that the previous string had an excellent standard deviation of muzzle velocities. In fact, the, both of the previous strings had a very good single digit standard deviation of muzzle velocities. We had pretty much 7 feet per second for string 1 and 5.4 feet per second for string number 2. Now string number 3, that's the end of that one. And uh, boy, once again, MOA 1.5 MOA, 48 points like string number 1, but I did get 3 of them in the X. Standard deviation of the muzzle velocities really jumped on 13.7 feet per second. My overall average, whenever I'm shooting a five-shot group with this Ruger Precision Rifle, um, I'm normally able to shoot that in about two and a half minutes for that five-shot group. String number four, 49 points, one in the X. Total time of two minutes, 44 seconds, and again, wonderful standard deviation, 3.4 feet per second. Shooting string number five, there's only six strings. This is string number five of six. And, you know, it's kind of interesting when I reflect back on the uh, muzzle velocities. And we oftentimes spend a lot of time or a lot of attention paid to the standard deviation of those muzzle velocities with the idea that a very low standard deviation of muzzle velocities will immediately, directly, absolutely translate into fantastic precision on target. With all my shooting that I've done over the years, I really don't see a very strong correlation between those two. String number five is in the books, 49.3 in the X, but 20.3 feet per second standard deviation. Now in the last 30 shot group that we shot, yeah, the best group that I shot also had the lowest standard deviation of muzzle velocities, but understand that correlation does not immediately indicate causality. There we have string number six, 47 points, one in the X, MOA of 1.26, and again, pretty much 20 feet per second standard deviation on the muzzle velocities. You know, I really thought that these Nossler custom competition bullets might prove a better choice than the Sierra tipped Match Kings that we used in a previous 30 shot group video. Well, we've got an awful lot of data that has been collected through this 30 shot group. So let's sit back and unpack all of these results. And let's start by looking at precision. This is the target that you saw out at the range. And uh, this is our final five-shot group. This is rounds 26 through 30. This is our 10-shot group. And then a 15-shot group. A 20-shot group. 25-shot group. And finally the final 30 shot group right there. So I entered all this data into the computer and what we're looking at here is the full 30 shot group. Now this is our first string, the first five shot group, and notice it's centroid there in the gray or black colored cross. Similar thing with string number two, string number three, string number four, string number five, and finally, string number six. Now what's perhaps most interesting is to look at the full 30 shot group and all of those six individual 
centroids indicated in the gray or black cross and then the final centroid shown in red. You know two of those centroids are pretty darn close but the other four quite a ways away. And this gives some credence to the idea that when we zero a rifle it shouldn't necessarily be based on just a five shot or sometimes a three shot group because of this dispersion that we see over a, a larger group size like a 30 shot group that we did today. The results of our centroid analysis or mean radius analysis are really worth taking a very very close look at. And here we see that the mean or average is 0 0.98, the average of those groups, the median 1.62 with a standard deviation, very high actually, standard deviation of 0 0.86 MOA. When we look at this from a probabilistic standpoint, we, we can then say that 66% of our groups will be no smaller than 0.77 MOA and, and potentially as large as 2.48 or 2.5 MOA. Under a 95% confidence we can say or need to say that this Nossler custom competition bullet in this particular Ruger precision rifle uh, will group out to 3.3 MOA. Not very impressive at all for a precision rifle. We'll compare that now to the Sierra tipped Match King. If you didn't see that video, I recommend that you do watch it so you get the entire gist of what we're doing. And I actually also explained the process much more carefully in that video than what we're doing today. But anyway, let's look at those results from the Sierra tipped Match King. Here we see that under a 95% confidence interval, the maximum size of our five shot group should be 1.19. And just like what we saw with the Nossler Custom Competition, we see that the six individual centroids uh, actually disperse quite a bit horizontally, but the final centroid of the 30-shot group, shown there in the bright blue cross, is really only close to one of those, again indicating the value of shooting larger groups. Well, now let's shift away from talking about precision and focus on accuracy. What we see is that the Nossler Custom Competition didn't do bad. Lots of those rounds were right there in the X. And in fact, of all the different groups, uh, I think we only put one into the 8 ring. Everything else in the 9s and 10s. Compared to the Sierra Tip Match King, though, again, this, uh, that bullet, the Sierra Tip Match King, outperformed the Nossler. Now it's important to understand that accuracy is really a function of how well do we have that rifle zeroed. And as we saw, if I had decided to go with the Nossler custom competition, I have to adjust my zero. Similarly, if I'm going to go with the Sierra Tip Match King as my go-to bullet in the future, which is what I'm going to do, again I have to adjust my zero to reflect the results of this 30 shot group. But even so, the uh, accuracy that I got out of the Sierra Tip Match King wasn't bad at all. But again, we can, we can take a nice precise group, a nice precise load, and then readjust our zero and we're going to get that, that accuracy out of it. Last, let's take a look at consistency. And for consistency, I like to rely upon the lab radar chronograph. Any chronograph, of course, will do. Uh, and we really want to focus on the standard deviation of those muzzle velocities. And what we see is, you know, I had one or two groups that just did fantastic, down well into the single digits, Every one of those rounds, all 30, were recorded, didn't have any errors whatsoever. But then we had some others up there in the 20s, quite high um, standard deviation for muzzle velocities. And overall, that drove a rather high um, standard deviation for the 30-shot group. Compared to the Sierra Tip Match King, really not too different in that overall average uh, for 
standard deviation of muzzle velocities. Now my final thoughts on all of this is number one, boy, does this ever prove that running a nice 30 shot group really does have value. Uh, it clearly demonstrated or proved to me that for this particular rifle, the Sierra Tip Match King is by far the better choice. And I've been shooting that, that round, that bullet for quite a number of years and I started thinking, you know, that Nosler, whenever I shoot that one, it seems to shoot pretty darn well. Maybe I should give that one a better chance. Well, it might have seemed to do pretty darn well, um, but when it's put head to head on paper, a large group size, 30 shot group, uh, it just didn't carry through. Again, that Sierra Tip Match King did a much better job. So I'm going to adjust my zero on this uh, Ruger Precision Rifle. Going to adjust the zero on that Schmidt and Bender scope that's on that rifle. Uh, and uh, coming up in a future special edition of Extreme Reloading, I'm going to be loading those Sierra Tip Match Kings into the brand new Alpha Brass. Uh, you might have caught that video just a couple of weeks ago. Look forward to doing that loading and heading out to the range and doing that test. Thanks a bunch for watching.